Hello everyone, welcome to our art class. This is your teacher, Ms. Thea G. Vasquez. Enjoy the lesson! As a guide to the multiple intelligences we will use for this discussion, these small icons that you will find in the upper part of the presentations are indications that our activities, tasks, or discussions will shape your naturalist intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, logical mathematical intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, verbal linguistic intelligence, musical intelligence, bodily kinesthetic intelligence, and of course, your visual spatial intelligence. For our learning target for today, I can identify the different cultural communities in the Philippines and differentiate organic lines to inorganic lines. For our work plan, let's see, let's connect, let's find out, let's draw, and exit bits. Hello everyone! Let's talk about the things around us. Look around you and identify the objects by its shape. Can you give examples? That's nice! This time, identify objects around you that does not show any form of a shape. How was it? Why do you think we can identify any of the shapes around us? What makes the object shapes recognizable? That's correct! Shapes around us are made from lines or connected by lines. That makes it recognizable. But what do lines are? How was it made or being used? Write your answers. Remember, the line is a continuous mark made on a surface. It is one of the most basic elements of art. Now let me tell you about the two kinds of lines. We have the organic lines and inorganic lines. Organic lines have length and direction that form an irregular shape. It can be found in nature. It uses curved lines. Just like in the picture, the trees, mountains, and clouds are examples of organic lines. Can you identify some figures made with organic lines? Inorganic lines, on the other hand, are marks with length and direction that are straight and form a geometric shape. By using different kinds of lines with varying shapes, lengths, and repetition of patterns, help in creating a beautiful artwork called linear composition. Where do you think we can apply linear art design? Here are some examples of linear composition. Are you familiar with these? What do we call this kind of design? Where do we usually see this kind of patterns or design? That's right! These are what we call ethnic designs. Our cultural groups uses linear composition designs which they call ethnic designs. These designs are can be found on their attire. But what do we mean by cultural communities? Cultural community are those who share one or more unique characteristics such as national origin, ethnicity, or religion. They are also called the indigenous people of the Philippines. Here are some of the cultural communities in the Philippines. In Luzon, we have the Ivatan, Ifogao, Kalinga, Gadang, Mangyan, Agta, and Bontok. 
In Visayas, we have the Ati tribe. Here are some of the cultural communities in Mindanao. The Bajau, Blaan, Tausog, Mansaka, Tiruray, Tiboli, and Yakan. The islands of Luzon is home to the cultural communities of Ivatan, Ifogao, Bonto, Kalinga, and Gadang. Each of these cultural communities has its own culture and tradition that date back in the history for hundreds of years. Let us try to know about them. The Ivatans are from the northernmost islands of the Philippines in the province of Batanes. They are known to live off the gifts of their lands and seas through fishing, farming, hunting, fabric weaving, and handicraft making. The Ivatans are known to live a very peaceful and simple way of life. The Ivatan females wear unique headgear called vacuum, which protects them from the heat of the sun and the drenching rain. The vacuum is made from a local palm called voyavoy. Kogon grass and abaca fibers are also used to create this eco-friendly wearable headdress. The Ivatan male's raincoat, called kanayi, is made from the same local palm or plants. The Ifugaos are the people in the province of Ifugao in the Cordillera mountain ranges of central Luzon. Their name is supposed to come from the word Ipugo, which means from the hill, hence they are called the inhabitants of the known earth. Their name is associated with the popular man-made Banawi rice terraces, which was hailed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The clothing of the Ifugaos is woven from looms. Ifugao males wear the traditional attire called Wano, a form of loincloth. They use six different types of this attire depending on the social status and the occasion. The Ifugao females wear a wrap-around skirt called tapis. Just like the males, the Ifugao females wear also five different kinds of tapis to match their social status and occasion. The Bontok people hail from the provinces of Ifugao, Benguet, Kalinga, Apayao, and Mountain Province in the Cordillera Administrative Region. They are traditionally headhunters using dogs to trap pigs into pits, snare birds and cats, and hunt wild carabouts. They use nets and traps in fishing. They also divert streams to catch fish. They irrigate agricultural lands for farming. Similar to the Ifugaos, the Bontok men wear loincloths. They have elaborately tattooed patterns on each side of their chest, shoulders, and arms, indicating the number of enemies they have defeated. They wear earrings made of wood tied on a string. Some of them have their faces painted with scarlet and yellow. Bontok women wear short wrap-around skirt and tiny decorated geometrically patterned hats where they usually put their pipe and tobacco. The Kalinga cultural communities are found in the Cordillera region in North Luzon. The Kalinga's main sources of livelihood are their rice fields and farms. They are engaged in agriculture. The weapons of the Kalingas carry tattoo designs painted in the shields. Some Kalinga people are expert mambabatok or tattoo artists. The Kalinga women's traditional attires are composed of a blouse, skirt, pendant with beads, and necklace. They also use headbands made of beads. Both men and women wear earrings made of shells, beads, and copper wires. The Kalinga men wear loincloths and a narrow cotton cloth called baag. A part of their upper garment that they rarely use is a blanket. The Gadang are mostly found in Central Isabela, Nueva Vizcaya, Quirino, and Cagayan in Northern Luzon. Like most of our cultural communities, the Gadangs are engaged in farming. They plant rice, tobacco, sweet potato, banana, papaya, 
green peas, and other fruits and vegetables. They also engage themselves in hunting and fishing to sustain their needs. Gadang men and women raise goats, cows, pigs, and chicken as well. The Gadang women's attire include tapis and a long sleeve waist length blouse. They are fond of colorful necklaces, wristbands, and bracelets made of copper and beads. The male wear loincloths and kerchiefs with intricate designs. Both men and women use ornamented and colorful beadwork usually shown in their headbands, necklaces, combs, ceremonial dresses, and other body accessories. The peace-loving Mangyans are from Mindoro. Agriculture is their means of livelihood. They also practice within farming or kainin, hunting, and fishing. They believe in deities and supreme being which they call Mahal na Makaako. The Mangyan men wear a loincloth and a cotton shirt, while the women wear a short skirt and a blouse. Both wear necklaces and bracelets made of beads. At the back of their shirt and blouse is an embroidered pakudus, a symbol which they believe helps them avoid evil spirits. The pakudus has symmetrical lines. The Mangyans are well known for creating beautiful crafts such as baskets and weaving clothes. Some of these are designed with the pakudus. They also make plated items. Let's go now to Visayas. The scattered islands of Visayas is home to the cultural communities of the Atis. They are an ethnic group in this part of the country. The Atis of Panay Islands. The Ati are also known as Aita, Aita, Ita. They are the first settlers in the Philippines. They usually live in the mountains. These places are in Negros and in Panay. They are excellent in hunting and food gathering. They practice freshwater fishing, sea fishing, and agriculture. Their clothing is just simple. Young women wear wraparound skirt, bark cloth for elder women, waist cloth for elder men. They use flowers and leaves as earplugs. They wear necklaces of threaded black, white, and brown seeds or dried wild berries. They also wear neck bands, arm bands, made of braided rattan and wild pig bristles. The Atis sell handicrafts like mats, bracelets, and wallets because of their skill in weaving and plating. The mountains, the hills, and forests are home to the Ati. They prefer to live near an area where there is good water supply. Two, their traditional shelter is both a roof and a wall. It is made of materials from the forest like three branches, twigs, and leaves. The Atis discovered the medicinal roots, herbs, and leaves which they use. They have rituals when applying their indigenous medicines. The Atis believe in good and bad environmental spirit which explain their deep regards in nature. For them, the earth is not their property. That's why they never cut trees, unless they really have to. They fear that the spirits will punish them. The Atis believe that all living things are the friends of man. Mindanao is a group of islands where beautiful landscape sceneries are found. It is a place where well-preserved beaches, rivers, and lakes, green forests, and sovereign mountains can be seen and explored. Mindanao is also a place of many cultural communities like Bajau, Mangyan, Samal, Yakan, Ubanon, Manobo, Higanon, Talaandig, Matigsalug, Blaan, Tiboli, Tiruray, Mansaka, and Tausug. Each native group develops its own special language, music, dance, beliefs, ceremonies, and rituals. Let us find out some of these ethnic groups. The Tibulis are found in the province of South Cotabato in southern Mindanao. They are engaged in farming. They plant rice, 
corn, cassava, and other root crops. The Tibulis are also engaged in hunting and fishing to sustain themselves. Almost all the clothes of the Tiboli women are made of dinala cloth. This cloth is made from woven abaca fiber by the Tibulis themselves. The Tinala cloth is a traditional cloth found in Mindanao up to these days. The Tiboli people are also well known for their elaborate beadworks, brass ornaments, and woven materials. This ethnic group wears very colorful dresses, foot-long earrings, layers of necklaces, rings, and lots of anklets and bracelets. The overlapping of shapes in the woven cloth of the Tibolis is observable also in their dresses, woven materials, and pieces of jewelry. The Yakans are from the southern Philippines in Mindanao. They reside in the mountainous interior part of Basilan Island. They are described to be kind and loving people. They are engaged in farming, fishing, carpentry, and weaving. The Yakan's women are engaged in making textiles for their cultural dress known as semek. They also make body accessories to form part of their costumes. Both Yakan males and females wear colorful hand-woven clothes. Their attire consists of a top, which is baju, and trousers, which is sawal. Both Yakan males and females wear narrow cut pants. The home of the Tausugs in Holosulu in Mindanao, some of the Tausugs are found in Pata, Tapul, Lugos, and Siasi Islands. Tausug communities are scattered, with houses located close to each family's land. The Tausugs are engaged in fishing, inter-island trade, livestock raising, and metalwork. Agriculture is the main source of their survival. The Tausug women wear blouses made of plain material, like satin. The Tausug men wear tight trousers, which they call kuput, matched with a colorless, short tailor jacket. The Tausug's patajong is sometimes used as a head cover, blanket, and wristband. Pajaos are known as the sea gypsies. They build their houses on stilts on the seashore or live in a houseboat. They use a colorful sailboat called a vinda when they go fishing. The Bajaos are likewise known for their ukir design which they sometimes apply in wood carving, mat weaving, and carving grave markers. Manobos believe in gods and goddesses and the other deities. Bee hunting and farming are part of their means of livelihood. Their house is also rectangular but with lots of posts on it. The dominant color on their clothing will give you an idea of which subgroup they belong to. The embroidery patterns can be floral, striped, zigzag, or horizontal. Like Manobos, the Blaans also live on a house with lots of poles, create baskets, weave abaca cloth, and wear tattoos. The women's blouse has lots of embroidery, buttons, and beads. Mindanao has more magnificent visual arts for you to discover. You will surely enjoy it because the more you learn, the more interesting it gets. Did you notice that despite having the same type of visual arts, each community still has its own distinct style? Why do you think it is important to know these people? We have learned a lot from our ethnic tribe as they are the core of our origin. Aside from inheriting their creativity, they have taught us values that we should live by. Showed resourcefulness by using indigenous materials and making them functional. Their harmony and respect for nature reflected in their design. They showed patience by weaving intricate patterns. They have reverence for their religious beliefs. There are a lot more to learn and apply, so it is important that you do your part as a true Filipino. How can we help preserve the art and
and culture of our cultural communities. Each of the cultural communities in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao is important. Together, they contribute to the rich art and culture that is uniquely Filipino. How they are able to develop and preserve their craftsmanship over the year gives us a sense of pride. The art of the cultural communities reflects their beliefs, environment, and also teaches values. That's why we have to respect and should help preserve it by patronizing their products and to be proud of them. Here are some of the ethnic designs created by our cultural communities. Did you notice the different kinds of lines in our cultural group's costumes? Can you identify some? With that, let us try making our own ethnic patterns and design using the different kinds of lines. Be creative! Let's draw! Let us make our own ethnic pattern design with the use of organic and inorganic lines. Here are some of examples of ethnic patterns. You may use crayons and colored markers in making the patterns. Please submit your activity in Genio on or before October 2. Indicate your name and section before you submit. Feel free to leave a message if you have concerns.